in the previous video, we showed how reactivity works in Svelte for simple variables. If you haven't seen that one, feel free to check it out. Otherwise, stick around. Now we're gonna take a step further and see how it works for more complex data structures, in particular arrays and objects. Let's start with arrays. Here's a numbers array that contains some numbers. Now let's introduce a button. Each time we click this button, we want to append a number to the array we just defined. So let's add a click handler which calls the append function. And where is this function? Well, we'll define it here. Let's use the arrays push method to append a new number to the numbers array. Let's also add a paragraph in the template that will show us all the numbers present in the array. So what do you expect to happen now? You want to take a guess? Let's head over to the browser. Wait a minute. What's going on here? Let's check the code again. So I'm pushing those numbers to the array here. What is happening? Well, let me tell you what's the catch. The thing is, reactivity in Svelte works when using the variable assignment. In other words, the equals operator. Here, we're using the push method to change the array. So, in this case, a simple way of forcing the numbers array to reactively update is just to reassign numbers to numbers, like this. Now, if we try this in the browser, it works. Back again. Another way of doing this is like so. Create a new array, then use the spread operator to unpack the elements of the numbers array, then add a new number to it, and now assign the whole thing to the same numbers variable. Notice that in both cases to make it reactive, we had to place the numbers array to the left side of the assignment. Let's say you want to change a specific element in the array by using its index. Let's change the called function, the handler, and the button name. So in here, when we click the button, the first number gets changed to, let's say, 999. And now, if you try this in the browser, you're going to see that it, this actually works. So again, why is that? because the numbers variable was on the left side of the assignment. Okay, so now we've gone through reactivity of arrays. What about objects? Let's first remove some code here. We'll define an object called person. This person has the keys name and details. The details key will have a value of another object, which in turn has age and height properties. We'll add a button called change age. When we click this button, we want to call the function change. So now let's define that function. In it, we'll access the person details and assign it to the variable called details. Now let's try to use that variable details to modify the person's age to 40, for example. We'll also display the age in the paragraph below. If you've been paying attention so far, you'll know that now, when we try this in the browser, it doesn't work. See? Try to figure out why. You ready? We see that the way we modify the age variable is actually through the details variable. And because in the template, we actually are showing the age by accessing the person variable first. This means that the reactivity of the variable person is needed. So, to make it reactive, the simplest trick is to do what we did for the array. Reassign the same variable, so assign a person to person. Now the person is on the left-hand side of the assignment, and when I try this in the browser, you can see it gets updated correctly. Alrighty, I hope you liked this video. If you have, give a thumbs up. and. If you want to stay updated on the upcoming ones, hit that subscribe and bell button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.